Parkman, and today I'm going to talk about invasives. Now there is a state list of invasives that you can get on the web, or you can find little pamphlets like this, in which they tell you all the plants that are on the invasive list. What's an invasive? An invasive is a plant usually introduced that is not native, and it produces so many seeds that it becomes overpowering for our native plants. And thus our wildlife, which isn't used to that diet, needs that variety of the natural plants, the native plants that come here, to um, survive. And if we have all invasives, they don't get to survive. So some of the plants that are on the invasive list are garlic mustard, which I keep pulling out all the time. It smells like um, mustard and garlic and it is a plant that produces a seed bank that lasts for 10 years so if you let a plant go to seed in your yard you can have 10 years of pulling weeds and I've seen a whole farm be taken over by garlic mustard. Other plants that are on the invasive list include uh, the Norway maple. The crimson variety isn't as bad as the uh, green variety, but it's a, a tree that people brought over and planted and now takes over in, in our forests. Japanese barberry is another one that is very detrimental to our environment. It's scratchy, it attracts ticks, and it is not a nice plant, even though I did plant it myself because it looked so pretty when I, was first, when I first gardened. It has a lovely red color in the fall, as does split bark euonymus or winged euonymus, which is uh, flaming red in the fall, and people still plant that. Even though market gardeners in some of the states are prohibited from selling it, here in Connecticut, I think it's still on a list, and gardeners, market gardeners, still allow it to be sold, unfortunately. Now, there are some plants that grow in my garden that grow so abundantly that they're um, too much for the, the garden. Um, some of these plants are bishop's weed that I once planted and it took me years to get rid of it. If you have a nice little container garden in which um, you know there's cement and house on all sides, then bishop's weed is a good one to grow. But if you're planting it in the garden, beware, it will take over as does myrtle or vinca. That's another one that will choke out the roots. And let's see, some others that you should be cautious about or put them into a spot that's hard to grow. Now, I made a mistake in planting English ivy and it has grown up this big old blue spruce. And I think it's perhaps ending its life a little early, although blue spruce don't last a tremendous amount of time. The Norway fir, the spruce, lasts much longer, 76 years, whereas the, the blue spruce lasts for maybe 50 years. But the English ivy has, as you can see, taken over the tree. And I've put it in some hard to grow areas where I can cut it back. As you can see, it's now growing over the stone wall. And it would grow in with the pachysandra in there. This is Japanese stilt grass, and it's taken over this whole area that was once just lovely moss and other wild flowers. But it's an annual, and it's easy to pull out individually, but there's just millions of little plants now. If you cut it just before it goes to seed, probably that would help. It goes to seed in September, and it... Um, the reason it's called stilt grass is you can sort of see that it has it's like has little stilts like if you were um, walking on stilts but it's a terrible terrible weed in that it just takes over this is an autumn blooming aster that makes a lovely ground cover and it requires no care at all it bloom it isn't an invasive it's a natural plant it blooms in the fall, so it's very important for the pollinators because it blooms late and they need their nectar in order to get them through the winter. 
it's a white flower that's quite pretty um, but you needn't cultivate it it just grows naturally by itself this honeysuckle was given to me and I hope that it's not on the state list I haven't checked it out but the honeysuckle does provide nectar and it smells so sweet and you can take a, a flower and um, put it in your mouth and bite it and get the, the honey or the nectar that the bees and the other insects would, would taste. But it, it also grows into a pretty high bush and as you can see it, it's been growing here for quite a few years but um, it does spread out. The milkweed is wonderful for the monarch butterflies, but it will take over a garden bed. So it's one of those plants that's difficult to keep in your garden bed because it's hard to remove. And once it gets that underground stem established, it just goes crazy. The goldenrod is the same, it, the one back there, and it's very similar to phlox. So it's hard to identify, especially in the spring. Again, the pollinators love it, but it grows too abundantly to have in your garden. When I was in England, they had very dense soil and they grow the goldenrod there, probably because the, the root doesn't take hold as it does here, but our soil is looser and it just takes over. This is Japanese barberry. It has a pricker on it so that the mice can get underneath it and the fox other predators to the mice can't get at them so it it attracts ticks and it was just a little wee thing a few years ago but now it's um, almost as tall as I am and it spreads to oh maybe eight feet across it's terrible to get out of trails I when I was working on Al's trail we'd have to take them out right beside the trail otherwise it would they would obliterate the trail but they Deep in the forest, you don't find them. It's when you get to where humans have been and they carry the seed in that you start seeing these Japanese barberry along the trail. Celandine has also a very abundant seed pod or seed bank and its leaf, you can see, is um, quite distinctive. It has a nice yellow flower there's a native celandine, and this is the invasive celandine. So it should be pulled out, and I'll pull it out. I've got all the seeds, and I'll throw them in the garbage. You can see that it also has that red in interior. So this is the poison ivy. It's going to grow up this tree, and it's curled itself around. So I've got a whole bunch of plastic bags on my hands, and I'm going to pull it as best I can. <clears throat> and get it off. But what I've got is the first layer and then I take the first layer of plastic bags off and coil it around and then I've got a bunch of other plastic bags to see if I can get more of it out. So, it's, so this is wine berry. It's very prickly um, and it does have little berries on them, but they're not very tasty. And as you can see, it's, it's in with my pea patch now, and it's um, going to inhibit me from... Um, it's already, it's, it's already uh, jabbing my fingers, but um, it needs to, needs to come out. And got, it just grows tremendously. So, um, I'll get more out later. And, well, I've got this plant that I just picked up. You can see it too has a tremendous seed bank. I don't know what the uh, name of this plant is, but when you see something new in your garden that is got a good seed bank, you can be pretty sure that it's probably on the invasive list and to check it out. The daisies are just gorgeous when they're in a breeze like this. Fresh as a daisy is of course a nice natural way to say, ah, oh, spring, it's gorgeous. 
these bloom but they will take over your garden if they're left to go so pick a nice bouquet and then get rid of some of the plants this one is ragweed the goldenrod gets a bad press but it's this ragweed that has a pretty leaf that is the one that causes everyone to sneeze and it will take over a yard also and over here we have burdock which I think is a native plant but it as you see has this tremendous seed bank also and it too will take over the lawn and the bank here this one over here is the purple loose strife I've been pulling it out for years and I'll pull it out again and it's a relative of the gooseneck loose strife which is growing in abundance in part of my yard and it was mixed in with the other plants that I did want to save and now it's choking them out so get rid of this you have to pull it out by the root otherwise it um, continues to grow year after year this is goose neck loose strife a pretty plant but it sends that underground runner also and it grows into my veggie garden it's beautiful in bouquets but just watch to plant it in a very hard to grow area otherwise you're battling those little pop-up shoots that come everywhere characteristic of the bittersweet is that orange root and you can see that it's growing all over here it ha has the ability to curl around and embrace a tree and choke it out and so it's doubly bad in that well, its root will continue to grow if you don't get a lot of the root out and it grows at the bottom of trees as this is doing because the birds come along and eat the seed of the bittersweet that grows around Thanksgiving. It, it pops out, you know, that orange outer husk and the deep orange inner, inner side that you, people used to make wreaths out of it. I did until I realized it was such a, an invasive. And it has the ability to take the top part of it and wind around in a circular movement until it latches on to a tree branch and I'll show you that you find it all over the road you find it in the gardens as I'm well it's down here not where I'm cultivating the garden too much but its characteristic is that orange root that you see there people think that there's a list of weeds but it wasn't as if God wrote a book and said, these are weeds and these are plants. What happens is that people decide on weeds, and really the definition of a weed is anything that grows where you don't want it. Everything else is wildflowers. However, there are lots of plants that just grow too, too abundantly, and those are called invasive, usually introduced from another country. And you have to weed them out, otherwise they just take over everything. They grow too abundantly and our wildlife can't sustain itself on those invasives from other countries because they're not used to them. And they don't have a year-round supply of food. The invasives make it so that they ripen all at once and then die. And the wildlife, including our pollinators, our insects, our butterflies, need a steady supply of nectar, pollen, seed, etc. So when you understand that combination of growing plants for wildlife and for invasives, it enhances nature. Uh, it's best not to grow all the same thing. You instead want a, a lovely um, combination of things. I just saw a bird over there, so excuse me. If you like this video and you've enjoyed daisies in a bouquet, please press like and I'll see you next time.